Alright, so we finished up our motorcycle test rig here for our Viragos and one of the things I installed was a dual air fuel ratio gauge from Innovate Motorsports. And when I first put it on here, and it's wired up just like when I first put it on, I went by the little book and it's got directions on uh, how to hook it up and then to use a relay to isolate the power and then hook directly to the battery. So all of that's hooked up just like it is right now. but. What you find is that because this is some 80s technology motor with transistors or whatever's running this thing, it doesn't like to, to uh, communicate very well with this new technology. So I'm going to turn it on for just a second. You're not supposed to turn them on and let them warm up. You're supposed to just turn it on and fire the motor up. But you'll see what it does. And I got a voltage gauge right there that shows I'm at 12 volts. But it, what it does is it goes E9, E9, and it resets that heater all the time. So I'll zoom in there and you can see when it's first coming on it says heater heater but then periodically it'll blink E9. So let me walk around this thing and we'll see how it's installed and then we'll show what we did to fix this thing. Alright so this dual air fuel ratio gauge is DLG1 and then it's got two oxygen sensors. Comes complete in a kit and so you can see right here is a big old automotive oxygen sensor and I got them piped in and then we got our gauge it's right up here and all of that wires up and it comes to get the dual you got to use this little adapter thing that comes with it uh, one of them hooks directly up to the gauge the other one goes through this little adapter so all that's pretty simple and easy we got our wiring all done right there but the problem we run into and I'll set the camera back down and fire it up and you can see that it gives an error when I try to fire the motor up. So let's get the camera put back over here and see what this thing's doing. All right, so if we fire it up, you'll see those gauges come on right down here and you can see my bolts. And when the motor fires up, you'll see I got plenty of voltage, but it's given that E9 error code that says low power. So let me fire it up and you'll see that code come up. then as you're running your test sometimes that E9 code will come back up and it'll fault out and it'll reset so the problem we run into is that it's our wiring with this old technology motor and this new technology sensor so let's get over here and see what we did to correct this problem all right so right now we are wired in just like the book says so this comes over from a relay this is the power wire it goes down to the power wires that are for the air fuel ratio gauge and then we got our grounds set up here and the ground wire goes to the gauge and it goes right down to the battery so that's how the book says to do it but setting it up this way gives us that E9 code that keeps resetting the gauge and it won't pick up the reading so we'll put the camera down over here and I'll show you what we did to get this fixed and then the gauges work really really good don't have any issues out of them and it just cost about 30 bucks more. So right there hiding in there is what our little fix is. All right, so to get these gauges to work properly and not air out, what I did is installed, and I got it loose right now because I'm set up the way the book says, but it's a little voltage stabilizer. And what it does is it takes eight to 40 volts and it converts it to a steady 12 volt. And it also isolates the power and it isolates the ground. That way we don't have any residual crazy stuff going on with our electronics on our motor that's impacting that really, really sensitive gauge. So, let's get this little guy put back in there. I'll just set it in there temporarily. Like that. And so what I'm going to do is wire the power wires and the ground wires from the motor over to the little gauge. And then we'll fire it up and we'll see that our error code goes away. 
All right, so we take the keyed wire that goes from the relay where the key cuts on. We're going to run that into our power wire. And then we're going to take the isolated 12 volt and run it down to the gauge right in there. Then we just got to do the same for the grounds. And so we take our ground wire. This one goes to the gauge. So from the battery to the gauge. So we're going to take the battery and we're going to input that into the power side. And then we're going to isolate our ground as well to the gauge. So there we go. As simple as that with a little voltage stabilizer, we should be able to stabilize the voltage to that gauge and then we're not going to have these erroneous errors anymore. So let's go back over here and we'll fire it up and see that the gauges come on real quick and they stay nice and stable. All right, so back over to our gauge side. So we'll fire it up and you'll see that the heaters come on and then we'll fire it up. So if you do end up getting a set of these uh, air fuel ratio gauges from Innovate Motorsports, they're not super expensive, 300 and something bucks, I think. But you need to go ahead and spend about 30 more dollars and get you a voltage stabilizer because you're not going to be able to read your air fuel ratio consistently because this gauge is going to air out just due to the sensitivity of the gauge and how old the electronics are on this old motor. Well, all right, I guess for my setup here and my testing, for a waste of money or worth it, I would say that the gauge set is worth it because it seems to work pretty good. It all comes as a kit and uh, hooked up really well, but it would be a waste of money if you didn't realize you've got to stabilize that voltage to this thing because all it's going to do is air out. You're going to be so frustrated and you're probably going to want to send it back. Well, all righty. Well, thanks for watching.